guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Jose Alvarez, and if you've seen my previous video, you kind of got to know a little bit about me. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, go ahead and check it out. Give it a thumbs up or a comment. If you have any comments on this video, uh, you can email me or drop a comment down below and try to get in touch with you. Um, this is going to be my first uh, case that I go over. I did a lot of research, a lot of man hours. Um, so this case is hard for me because as a father, I can't see myself hurting my own child, you know. And I hope some of you understand, and maybe some of you are parents. So, in March 11, 2003, John Allen Rubio and Angela Camacho murdered their children and decapitated all three of their children. Uh, their, their excuse for doing this was that they thought the children were possessed. So on March 11, 2003, uh, Officer Efrain was on a, on a call for a uh, domestic disturbance and on his way there he realized he was headed the wrong way. Uh, so as he went to go turn around, a couple stopped him, waved him down, uh, screaming frantically. Uh, Officer Camacho pulled his cruiser over and uh, rolled down his window. And uh, the couple started uh, talking to him, babbling, and he couldn't really make out what they were saying. Uh, the only thing he could make out was that uh, the babies have no head. Um, so Officer Efrain took the couple in his cruiser and followed their directions to an apartment complex uh, on the corner of 8th Street and East Tiger Street on the border of... Um, Bronxville, Texas, and Matamoros. This building complex was located on the outskirts of downtown uh, Bronxville. Uh, I lived in Bronxville for about two, three years, and I can tell you that place is yeah, that place is full of enigmas. And um, so, Officer Efrain made his way to the apartment complex with a couple. Uh, a strange man answered the door. Uh, that strange man was John Allen Rubio. He let the officer and the couple in. And um, inside was his wife, Angela Camacho, but the kids were not around, three children. They had uh, three children, one of them was, the oldest was Julissa, she was the age of three, then John and Stefan, a boy, he was a uh, one-year-old, and the youngest one was Mary Jane, she was two months old. Um, Officer Efrain started investigating and the couple told John, uh, go ahead, tell him what happened. And John looked at the officer and said, the, the kids are in the back room. So the officer made his way to the back room. And as, his made, as he made his way there, he noticed a strange smell, uh, a strange smell. Uh, it smelled like chemicals, like cleaning chemicals, most likely bleach. When he got to the back room, he noticed a figure on, on the bed. So as he went to go investigate, he noticed there was a human child with his head missing. So the officer backed up and made his way back to the living room. He indicated for everybody to leave the apartment and he called for backup. Uh, as I read the police statement, I, I realized Officer Efrain took everything really uh, professional, you know. He, he didn't freak out. He, he didn't get mad. He searched John for weapons. He searched uh, Angela for weapons and waited for backup. And when backup arrived, um, they put both of them in a cruiser and took them downtown. Officer Efrain, for a long time, had problems because of what he experienced. He had said he learned in one day, he could have learned in three years. So for him, it was really hard. Uh, seeing that scene. Alan Rubio's confession, uh, he stated that Jalissa had grabbed a pair of scissors and was going to stick them in, in an outlet. So he stopped her and when he stopped her, she started talking to him like she was possessed. He stated that she was growling at him. Then he realized that she was talking to him like his dead, deceased grandmother. Um, he asked Jalissa, what's going on? What's wrong with you? And Jalissa stated that, according to John Allen Rubio, stated that she was 
his grandmother. Um, and John took this really hard. He 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 believed in witchcraft and he believed in uh, no evil spirits, and he he thought Jalissa was possessed by his deceased grandmother. So he grabbed her and picked her up and started shaking her, asking her, asking her, you know, what's going on with you? Leave my, leave my daughter. And Jul he stated that Jalissa was just laughing, growling at him. He, she kept on talking in, in uh, his grandmother's voice. And so he proceeded to strangle her. Um, as he strangled her, in his statement, he states that and Angela t told him to, to kill her. Uh, Angela told him to kill her and, and that she'd rather see her dead than uh, possessed. So in his statement, he states that Angela went to the kitchen and grabbed a knife and brought it to him, but he did not want to kill him. So, sh so he laid her down and kept strangling her, tried to stop her from talking, uh, moving around, and so he thought he had no option. So he grabbed the knife, stabbed her a couple of times in the back of the neck, stabbed her in the stomach, and she just wouldn't die according to John Allen Rubio. Um, so he proceeded to grab a machete, and this is where it gets really graphic. Uh, he grabbed a machete, a machete and started swinging at her neck. When he finally removed uh, poor Jalissa's head off. Um, he states that John and Stefan, the, the boy, started doing the same thing. So he grabbed John and Stefan and proceeded to do the same thing to him. And when he went to go remove his head with the machete, he couldn't find the machete. He states that he thinks the witches grabbed the machete. And his statement is really weird and really off 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 base. Like he states the machete was there and then he states the machete's not there, that it was taken by witches. And in the beginning of his statement he never he never talked about witches. Uh so it, to me it sounded kinda of weird. Um so he couldn't find the machete, so what he did, he used uh, a dull kitchen knife, the, the knife he used to stab the, the children. Uh, so it took him a while, he started going at it, you know, graphic scenes, um, but he states he couldn't, he couldn't remove the head. So he started pulling and pulling until finally the poor child's head came off. Um, unfortunately for the youngest child, uh, the same, the same process spilled over to, to, to it, um, to her. They stated that supposedly the children were possessed, which to me is totally impossible. According to what I believe, it's impossible because children belong to God, children are angels, and they're innocent. And no matter... Um, what people think, some people out there think, you know, we're born with the, the first sin, uh, according to my belief, that is not true, we, children are pure, and are angels, so to me it seems like, the, the, the person that was possessed was him, and his wife, it makes more sense that they were possessed, instead of, instead of the children, so as for Angela Camacho's uh, written statement, it was it was similar to John's, but in her statement she does not take the fault for anything. She said he made her do it. Um, she also says that she was just crying. She does admit that she helped him hold down the children as he did what he did, but she never takes the blame for stabbing or taking the children. Uh, heads off. Um, to me, I don't know how you can be in your right mind to do all of this. Uh, but then again, they weren't in the right mind. John Allen Rubio suffered uh, since a child, suffered with mental complications. His teachers 
He said that he was a really emotionally needy child. He struggled in school. He was in special ed classes, and he was in special ed classes all the way through high school. But when he got to high school, um, he started really searching for that structure. So he joined the swim team and the ROTC. Um, he was kicked out of ROTC for his behavior and um, the swim team kept him on for a while until he graduated. When he graduated, he lost all that structure and I think that's when things took a turn for the worst. As for Angela Camacho, there's really not much about her. Uh, her family uh, did very little interviews and the interviews that they did was mostly with the court and courtroom. Um, she she never did any interviews. She didn't talk to nobody. Uh, she just stayed with her statement, and that helped her. That actually helped her get a plea deal. So right now she's serving uh, three consecutive life sentences, and she'll be eligible for parole in 2042. A long time from now. Uh, John Allen Rubio is currently sitting in death row waiting for his number to be called and to me I can't be no one to judge but there's a God out there and he sees it all and your day will come where where you you will have to you know face the facts and unfortunately face the wrath of God <laughs> alright so some of my theories on this case is um, to me, I think it was a mixture of John and Angelica's mental health and easily being influenced by evil presence, evil spirits. I think, to me, they were the ones that were being influenced. I believe in evil spirits as well as I believe in good. If there's good out there, there there's always a bad. Uh, that's my theory. Um, I think these children deserve better and I think as, as a community we could have done a little bit more. Uh, Brownsville has very little resources on helping uh, the mentally ill, no schools for uh, lawyers, no school for uh, mental health um, providers, there's, there's really nothing around there. Maybe two to three hundred miles further uh, into the United States, there's uh, schools, prestigious schools in law and mental health um, help. But as for in Brownsville, Brownsville is a really poor community. Uh, they live in below average income. And I'm not one to judge or anything, but um, there's a lot of things that maybe could have helped them or, or maybe could have made things go differently, but unfortunately we can't turn back time and we can't really know what really happened in, in that apartment. Uh, the only people that knew, unfortunately, was the children and, and their parents. We got the story from their parents and that's all we have. We can all make assumptions and theories but we really will never know. The only person that knows is God up above. So I want to thank you guys for watching my videos. If you have any theories on this case, if you have any questions or any comments, go ahead down below. Drop a comment if you like this video. I know it was a little graphic, uh, something we really don't see every day. Um, but I hope you liked it. Don't be afraid to uh, shoot me an email. Uh, my email will be down below uh, on the description. Shoot me an email if you have any stories you, you'd like to tell. Uh, any stories on the paranormal, um, ghost sightings, you know, evil presences that you've experienced, uh, stories about things that have happened to you. I heard a lot of stories about uh, elves in Mexico and all this crazy stuff um, just drop your stories if you'd like for me to share your name give me that permission to share your name I'll, I'll give you a shout out and uh, include your story 
Uh, I'll be doing a video, uh, kind of doing a mixture of stories I get emailed and drop a couple of my own stories. So, um, I'll see y'all next time. Don't be afraid to click that subscribe button, that like button, leave comments. I don't care if they're bad comments. Um... <laughs>